welcome to the Leading with Lean podcast. My name is Philip Holt, author of Leading with Lean, The Simplicity of Lean, and Leading Lean by Living Lean. And in this podcast, I narrate all three of my books, chapter by chapter, in which I share with you my over 30 years of experience as a lean leader across many companies globally. Leading with Lean, chapter two. What is lean? The different levels of lean. The question, what is lean, is one which I believe will be argued and debated until the end of time, and I will therefore avoid being perceived as arrogant in trying to settle the debate, and will instead, humbly, offer a model answer that I have developed throughout my years of practice, and which has served me well. The first thing to say is that the word lean works at three levels, as embodied in the Shingo levels of transformation. The Shingo levels of transformation are tool-driven, system-driven, and principle driven. These three levels in part explain why the word lean has different meanings to different people and organisations and it is therefore imperative that before beginning a lean transformation you establish what lean should mean to your organisation and its people. Assuming that everyone will understand the meaning in the same way is the first step on the path to failure and therefore significant time should be invested in this effort. In my experience the only meaning that lean can have if you are to transform your organisation into one that is truly world class, is one of lean thinking, a principle driven approach that embodies the lean principles into the very culture of the organisation. Within this definition, the lean and Six Sigma toolkits will be utilised as required and appropriate systems will be put into place to drive improvement of the value streams. Most importantly, however, all team members, from those adding value at the Gemba, the shop floor, workshop, operating theatre, call centre, etc. To the team leaders, supervisors, area managers, middle managers, directors and executives will be trained, coached and certified in the lean principles, embedding them into their way of working and ultimately the culture of the organisation. Lean as an acronym. I have therefore developed the word lean into an acronym, one which I think adequately articulates the essence of what the lean leader should see as the purpose of lean. And it came to me while I was using an alternative acronym as a provocative but fun way of describing to a class precisely what lean is not. Some of you may already know the alternative acronym, which is lean equals less employees are needed. I often use this acronym to deal with one of the symptoms of the abuse of lean over the past few years, which is the perception by many people, especially those most vulnerable to the misapplication of lean, that it is a management tool to reduce the headcount and to downsize the organisation. However, nothing could be further from the truth in those organisations where lean has been utilised as a strategy to enable the business to attain world-class excellence. Lean will certainly result in achieving more with the same resources, as its primary intent is to remove the waste in the system through attacking the root causes. However, where a principle-driven approach is taken, waste does not equal people. On the contrary, People are viewed as the only asset that appreciates in value over time, as we are capable of learning, adapting and adding additional value through the removal of waste in the value stream. Explaining the difference between removing waste and reducing the headcount is always a challenge, and the more cynical of colleagues can assume that it's simply a case of semantics. However, Colin McLaughlin of Enner.com stated it very well in his LinkedIn article, Five Myths About Lean That Are Holding You Back. In it, he says, lean organisations achieve success by eliminating unnecessary work. Does this mean they eliminate jobs? There is a difference between work and a job. Work implies activity, while job usually indicates employment. Do you regret that you no longer have to wash clothes by hand? Do you miss sweeping chimneys and turning a crank to get your car to start? I doubt it. Those processes have improved and this allows us all to spend more time doing meaningful work. This is what lean aims to do for your job. Eliminating unnecessary activity makes employees more valuable by freeing up time and energy for more important and fulfilling work. Lean is meant to allow us to lead a less burdensome life, to better humanity for all through the work and effort we put into our jobs. Lean thinking therefore teaches us that where we actively apply principle-driven lean thinking, we will drive customer value up and see the QCD, quality, cost and delivery performance of the value streams and hence the organisation flourish. Where the organisation has unimaginative and traditional leadership stuck in the status quo, 
This will result in the organisation requiring fewer people as they will maintain the status quo in terms of their markets, market share and customer base. However, while lean thinking has been truly established, the leadership will understand the full extent of the growth opportunity that has been created and will use this platform to take the organisation to new markets, develop new products or services, find new customers and grow market share. Thinking Lean Lean leaders must therefore enable lean thinking within their organisations and the acronym that I've developed to explain how to do this is Lean equals leadership, excellence, analysis and no. Hi Philip here, sorry to interrupt the narration of this particular chapter but I just wanted to remind you that all of my personal profits from the books go to charity and so if you would like to buy a book it would really be helpful Otherwise, if you feel that the podcast is sufficient, then please feel free to make a donation to my current charity, which is Women's Aid. It's a great charity which helps to stop domestic violence for women and children. Thank you. First one, leadership. In Lean Thinking, leadership is not just for those people provided with a job title, but for everyone within the organisation to take leadership in their own domain. Through setting the appropriate boundary conditions, taking a people-focused approach, respect for people, to our business processes, and ensuring that everyone is focused on what the customer or consumer perceives as value, we can utilise daily management to ensure continuous flow of products, information, knowledge and services throughout the value stream. Secondly, excellence. The purpose of excellence is core to lean, and this is enabled through some of the key tenets of a lean business system. Utilising small batch sizes, continuous flow, built-in quality and pull systems, not only for products but also information, knowledge and services, all of which have been based upon the customer demand, we enable daily management to drive rapid problem solving in Kaizen. Team men members are encouraged to constantly experiment with improvements to the system and through Go to Gemba, the place where the value is added, leaders are able to coach and act as teachers. Third, analysis. Lean thinking has its foundation built on fact-based decision-making. Through the application of A3 thinking and a short interval control approach, our people are rapidly involved in problem solving, using the appropriate tools, including both the Lean and Six Sigma toolkit, to find the root cause and implement countermeasures. However, experimentation and learning are a major element and therefore at the Gemba problem solving with cardboard engineering experimentation is common. And this approach is not just for the shop floor, but is applicable all the way to the boardroom. Finally, no. In my experience, the secret formula of lean thinking is Horsham Canary, or policy deployment, and the one area that most organisations struggle to apply. Having the courage to say no to the multitude of opportunities that an organisation has, and to have the laser-like focus required to choose only those few things that will truly provide the breakthrough results is extremely difficult, and only a few organisations have the level of discipline and stamina required to truly do this. Without the ability to say no, most businesses tend to overload their people and fail to execute effectively. The Lean Principles Womack and Jones codified lean thinking with their five steps. First, understand what the customer values. Secondly, visualise the value stream and remove the waste. Thirdly, create flow. Fourthly, so that the customer can pull the value, and finally, continually strive for perfection. These lean principles are quite well known by a large number of people throughout industry, and there is general agreement that they exemplify how an organisation can manage its value streams towards operational excellence. Nevertheless, it is a consistent challenge to attain this state due to the difficulty in aligning the organisation around delivering customer value with the minimum of waste due to a number of endemic disablers. Throughout this book, I will attempt to identify these disablers and provide you with the enablers that will ensure that you can take your business on the journey to world class. Those organisations that have embedded lean thinking into their company culture have demonstrated superior performance over significant periods of time and proved that lean is, above all, about integrating a principle-driven approach to an organisation's management philosophy. Lean leadership. Throughout the lean transformation, the lone violinist will need to maintain strong leadership and to be successful will need to develop a network of lean leaders in the organisation, ultimately aiming to make their own 
role redundant as the leadership style in the business transitions to the one that is embedded in lean thinking. There are four interrelated styles of lean leadership that will ensure that you are successful in your own and your coachee's transformational leadership. First one, leadership activism. Being an active lean leader as opposed to an advocate or supporting leader is critical to success. Anyone can support an initiative for transformation or advocate it to anyone who will listen, but an activist is in the game, leading through example and action and learning by doing. Secondly, visible leadership. Whilst being active in the change, the lean leader must also be visible to their teams, running the kinds and events, coaching and being at the Gemba as often as they can. Planning and communicating from HQ might be comfortable, but will not infuse the team as it needs to. Thirdly, mosquito leadership. This form of lean leadership is the one that will really infect the organisation and create the viral change that is necessary. The mosquito leader will be a form of irritant to the status quo, but it is exactly this paradigm breaking approach that will ensure that the organisation can break the chains of its current culture and make the step change that is necessary. And then finally, coaching leadership. The last form of leadership that's required is the one that will engage the lean leader most with the organisation. This is the approach that brings them into direct contact with the team members in coaching behavioural change, but it's a real challenge as it requires them to have the patience to stay off the field of players that let the people best able to make the change do it. All four styles are covered within their own chapters of the book and are equally important to success. Nevertheless, they will require significant self-development and a true belief in the journey of the transformation. Lean is simply good business. I hope this chapter has confirmed what you might already know, that lean thinking is relatively simple in essence, but requires highly effective leadership to ensure synchronisation of the organisation's thinking. Lean leadership starts with the lone violinist, but most virally, through a systematic development of the organisation's people, become the modus operandi of everyone in the business and the way that we deliver the value that our customers demand. Lean leadership will only permeate the organisation if there is a reason for it to do so, and the lean transformational leader must therefore establish the case for change. In the next chapter, I will explore how we may do this. Music